are welcome to our treatment of depreciation of non-current assets. Depreciation of non-current assets is the economic value of non-current assets utilized or lost during an accounting year. Depreciation can also be defined as proportion of the original cost of a non-current asset allocated as an expenses against accounting period throughout the useful life of an asset. In order to have a better understanding of the definition of depreciation, we begin by explaining what is non-current assets. Non-current assets are properties or assets of a business. These properties are purchased not for sale or to be sold, but for use in the business for the generation of wealth. Examples of non-current assets are land and building, plant and machineries, furniture and fittings, motor vehicles, equipment, and so on. When these assets are acquired, they are being put into use in the business for the generation of wealth or for running the business. As these non-current assets are being put into use, they begin to experience physical deterioration. This could be as a result of wears and tears due to usage. Now, if the organization does not make provision for depreciation, a time will come when such assets will no longer be able to function and thus will go out of use and the organization will have no assets for running the business. If a business acquires motor vehicle as part of a non-current asset, and the original cost of such motor vehicle is $5,000, and such motor vehicle will have a useful life of five years, that means after five years, it will no longer be useful. It means that if you divide $5,000 by five years, you are having $1,000 per year. It means that in every accounting period, from the profit made by the organization, $1,000 will be deducted as an expenses. This amount will not be spent, but will be saved. And if this is done for the five years of the useful life of the asset, $5,000 will be recovered for the purchase of another asset, all things being equal. Let us look at some of the causes of depreciation. The first one is physical deterioration. This is caused mainly from wear and tear due to usage. This can also be caused from the effect of erosion, rust and decay. When exposed to wind, rain, sun and other elements of weather. Secondly, economic factors. A non-correct asset can become obsolete or at model. Example, a computer model from Pentium 3 to Pentium 4 may make Pentium 3 becomes at model and thus a fall in value. Thirdly is time. Whether an asset is put into use or not, it will lose value with passage of time. Fourthly, fluctuation in exchange rate can cause reduction in the value of a non-current asset if the currency of the affected country becomes cheaper. Depreciation of non-current assets. Depreciation of non-current assets is the economic value of non-current assets utilized or lost during an accounting year. Depreciation can also be defined as proportion of the original cost of a non-current asset allocated as an expenses against accounting period throughout the useful life of an asset. Causes of depreciation. Physical deterioration. This is caused mainly from wear and tear due to usage. This can also be caused from the effect of erosion, rust and decay when exposed to wind, rain, sun, and other elements of weather. Economic factors. A non-current asset can become obsolete or at model. 
computer model from Pentium 3 to Pentium 4 may make Pentium 3 become a model and thus a fall in its value. Time. Whether an asset is put into use or not, it will lose value with passage of time. However, some assets may not depreciate with time, rather, under some circumstances, they appreciate. Land and glasses are some examples. Fourth, fluctuation in exchange rates can cause a reduction in the value of a non-current asset. Fluctuation in exchange rates can cause a reduction in the value of non-current assets if the currency of the affected country becomes cheaper. There may also be other causes of depreciation, which we are going to look at as we progress in our studies. Depreciation of non-current assets. Depreciation of non-current assets is the economic value of non-current assets utilized or lost during an accounting year. Depreciation can also be defined as proportion of the original cost of a non-current asset allocated as an expenses against accounting period throughout the useful life of an asset. Causes of depreciation. Physical deterioration, one. This is caused mainly from wear and tear due to usage. This can also be caused from the effect of erosion, rust, and decay. When exposed to wind, rain, sun, and other elements of weather. Two, economic factors. A non-current asset can become obsolete or at model. Example, computer model from Pentium 3 to Pentium 4 may make Pentium 3 become at model and thus a fall in value. Three, time. Whether an asset is put into use or not, it will lose value with passage of time. However, some assets may not depreciate with time. Rather, under some circumstances, they appreciate. Land and glasses are some examples. Four, fluctuation in exchange rate can cause a reduction in the value of a non-current asset if the currency of the affected country becomes cheaper. We are going to be looking at various methods of accounting for depreciation of non-current assets. For the purpose of our foundation level, we are going to look at three basic methods. One, the straight line method, which can also be called the fixed installment method, or can also be called the uniform rate method. Two, we are going to be looking at the reducing balancing method, which can also be called the diminishing balancing method. Thirdly, the sum of the year digits method. Let us look at the first method, that is the straight line method of accounting for depreciation of non-current assets. In this method, the depreciation value of an asset is spread equally over the useful life of an asset. Let us take a question on this. Methods of accounting for depreciation of non-current assets. We are going to take a creation on the straight line method. Another name for straight line method is the fixed installment method. It can also be called uniform rate method. In this method, the depreciation value of an asset is spread equally over the useful life of the asset. Illustration. Victory Enterprises acquired a motor vehicle for cash of $10,000 on January 1st, 2018, for use in the business. The motor vehicle is expected to last for four years, after which it will be scrapped for $3,164. It is the policy of Victory Enterprises to depreciate the company's non-current assets using the uniform rate method. You are required to show 
the depreciation value that will be spread equally over the useful life of the asset. Two, using the reducing balancing method, show the depreciation for each of the four years of the asset's life. Three, using the sum of the year's digit method, calculate depreciation for each of the four years of the in calculating for the annual depreciation using the straight line method, discover the date of the purchase of the assets. One. Two. When the business ends the accounting period. Two. Discover the cost of the assets in question. Discover the number of years that the asset will last. And discover the scrap value of the asset, if any. Then with this, you can carry out your computation or calculation. The straight line method Calculation of annual depreciation. Annual depreciation can be calculated as C minus S divided by N. AD represents annual depreciation. C represents the cost of the assets. In our equation, the cost of the asset is $10,000. S represents scrap value of the assets. That is $3,164. Then we have N. N represents the number of useful life of the asset. And in this equation, it's four years. If you go through the equation, Victory Enterprises acquired a motor vehicle for cash of $10,000. That is the cost of the asset represented by C. January 1st, 2018. That is the date of acquisition of the asset. On January 1st, 2018, that is the date of acquisition. The motor vehicle is expected to last for four years. That is the number of useful life of the asset, which is four years. After which, it will be scrapped for $3,164. This is the scrap value which can also be called the residual value. It is the policy of Victory Enterprises to depreciate the company's non-current assets using the uniform rate method. Now, the uniform rate method is talking about the straight line method, and the requirements have been stated. We are looking at the first requirement, which states that we should show the depreciation value that will be spread equally over the useful life of, a, of the asset. When depreciation is spread equally over the useful life of the asset, we are referring to the straight line method. Now, the annual depreciation is C minus X divided by N. We have said that C is the cost of the asset. Therefore, annual depreciation AD equal to $10,000 representing the C, then the minus, you can see it here, then the S, which is the scrap or residual value or salvage value, is $3,164. So we have cost minus scrap value divided by useful life of the assets, which is four years. Now the annual depreciation, which is cost of $10,000, minus the scrap value. So we now have 10,000 minus 3,164, which gives us 6,836. This is known as depreciation cost. Now the scrap value, or the salvage value, or the residual value of $3,164, it is the amount that will be recovered at the end of the useful life of the motor vehicle when its useful life expires on when it is sold. Now, this amount will be recovered. Therefore, since this amount will be recovered, it means that the depreciation cost will be 10,000 minus 3,164, which gives us 6,836. This is the amount that the organization will seek to recover from depreciation. Since the scrap value of the asset can be recovered when the asset is sold. What this really means is that 
The motor vehicle cost the organization 10000 At the end of four years, when they sell this motor vehicle, which cost is 10000 they will recover only 3164 That means that this will be the realizable value of the motor vehicle. Therefore, it is not part of what the organization is seeking to recover. What they seek to recover now is 10,000 minus 3,164, which is 6,836. This is the amount that will be consumed due to depreciation during the four years period of existence. Therefore, how will the organization recover these $6,836? It is to divide this amount by the useful years or four years. Since this is the cost they want to recover, that is depreciation cost of 6,836. So dividing this by this, 6,836 divided by four years, therefore the annual depreciation is $1,709. It is this amount that will be uniformly deducted as expenses from the profit of this organization every year for four years. If this amount is recovered from the company's profit for four years, then the organization will recover $1,709 times four years. If you multiply this amount by four years, it's going to give you back the depreciation cost of 6,836. And once this is recovered, and they sell the motor vehicle and recover the scrap value, the scrap value plus the 6,836 that will be recovered over four years will now give you back 10,000. Therefore, annual depreciation value of $1,709 will be equally spread for the four years useful life of the motor vehicles as follows. We have years, we have annual depreciation, we have 2018. The annual depreciation will be 1709 2019, the same amount, $1,709. 2020, the same amount, $1,709. And 2021, the same amount, $1,709. If you add the depreciation for four years, $1,709 plus $1,709 plus $1,709 plus $1,709. It's going to give us $6,836. And this is four years depreciation. Then if you add the scrap value, 3,164, it will give you $10,000, which is the original cost of the motor vehicle. The implication of what we have done here is to show the fact that the organization already knows that at the end of the four years useful life of the motor vehicle, the scrap will be sold for 3164 What they pursued to realize is $6,836, which is the depreciation cost. If they realize this and add it to this, it will give $10,000, which is the original cost of the motor vehicle. Reducing balancing method or declining balancing method or Diminishing balancing method. In this method, a constant depreciation rate is applied to the asset and the subsequent reduced balance, that is the current amount of the asset every year. We are not going to solve the second question that relates to the reducing balancing method using the same illustration. Reducing balancing method. In this method, a constant depreciation rate is applied to the asset and the subsequent reduced balance, the carrying amount of the asset every year. The reduced balance is known as carrying amount. By the time we progress into the calculation, you will understand more about what the carrying amount means. The formula for reducing balancing method is dr is equal to 1 minus nth root of s divided by c. 
where dr is equal to depreciation rate that is dr means depreciation rate where n is equal to useful life of the asset in our equation it is four years s is salvage or residual value it's either called salvage value or residual value or it can be called scrap value in our equation it is 3,164. Then we have C, which represents cost of the asset, which is 10,000. You can see in the formula, we have N, which is the number of years, which is four years. We have X, which is the scrap value, which is 3,164. And we have C, which is the cost of asset, of course, which is $10,000. We have that depreciation rate, which is DR is equal to one, Look at the one here, minus, look at the minus here. We have the nth root, n is the number of years, which is 4. We substitute n with 4. And we have x, which is the square value, which is 3,164. We substitute it for s, 3,164. Then c, which is the cost, is $10,000. You can see it. $10,000. So we have nth root of 3,164 divided by 10,000. The first thing we are going to do is to divide 3,164 by 10,000 and see what we are going to get. If you divide 3,164 by 10,000, it's going to give you 0 0.3164. That means we have the fourth root of 0 0.3164. Now, to obtain this answer, we apply the law of indices. So what do you do? You put the 0 0.3164 in bracket. Then any number that is here, like here we have 4, raise it to the power here and convert it to 1 over 4. What I mean is simple. If it is 4 that is here, convert it to 1 over 4. If it is 5 years, convert it to 1 over 5. If it is 6 years, convert it to 1 over 6. Here we have 4. So we convert this 4 to 1 over 4 and use it to raise 0 0.3164 to power. So it becomes 0 0.3164 raised to power 1 over 4. Now you see bring down this figure, 0 0.3164 here. Then you have 1 divided by 4 which gives us 0 0.25. So we have 0 0.3164 raised to power 0 0.25. If you use your punch to raise this number, 0 0.3164, raise it to power 0 0.25, you have, you have 0 0.75. Now, that means in this operation we have 1 minus 0 0.3164 raised to power 1 over 4, which eventually becomes 1 minus 0 0.3164 raised to power 0 0.25, which eventually becomes 1 minus 0 0.75. That is, if we bring all the 1 down and all the minuses alongside. Then finally, we have that 0 0.3164 raised to power 0 0.25 gives us 0 0.75. Then, 1 minus 0 0.75 gives us 0 0.25. If we times the 0 0.25 by 100, it gives us 25%. Already we know that 0 0.25 means 25%. But to convert it to percentage, you multiply by 100, it gives us 25%. So the operation here is now telling us that the depreciation rate to be applied under the reducing balancing method is... 25%, which we have derived using the formula DR, which is depreciation rate, DR, which is depreciation rate, is equal to 1 minus nth root of S over C, where S is the square value of the asset, C, the cost of the asset, and N, the number of years that the asset will last before it will be scrapped. How did we convert this to 0.75? If you are using your punch or your calculator, what you do is to press 
0.3164. That is this. Press 0 0.3164. Then press X raised to power Y or this symbol in your calculator. What this symbol means, this or this, or any other sign or symbol in your calculator means raised to power. By the time you press this and press this, you are automatically raising this to power. And what is the power you are raising it to? To 0 0.25. So press 0 0.3164. Press this or this, then press 0 0.25. That means you have raised 0 0.3164 to power 0 0.25, and that gives you 0 0.75. Then you now apply the 0 0.75 to the formula. Remember that the formula is 1 minus n root of s over c. And we have succeeded in converting this n root over s over c to 0 0.3164 raised to the power 0 0.25, which gives us this. So you bring down the 1, which is this, minus. So we now have 1 minus this. Of course, this gives us 0 0.75. We now have 1 minus 0 0.75, which gives us 0 0.25 times 100, which we included here on our... Now, this 25% is now what we are going to use to compute the depreciation for the four years using the reducing balancing method. Of course, we should know that we are looking for 25% of 10,000, which is the cost of the asset, the motor vehicle. Now, let's go back to the computation. We have calculation of four years depreciation using the reducing balancing method. Now, the cost of the motor vehicle from our equation is $10,000. And we have already been able to derive rate of 25%. Now the motor vehicle was purchased or has a cost of $10,000 as at 1st January 2018 when it was purchased. Depreciation rate is 25% it was not given. As we they gave us 25% as the depreciation rate, there will be no need for us to compute it. In any equation that you are not given the depreciation rate, then the equation will give you the cost of the asset, which is $10,000, the square value of the asset, which is 3,164, and then the useful life of the asset, which is four years. With this, you can compute and discover the rate of depreciation. However, in this question, after computation, we were able to obtain our own rate, which is 25% from the variables given to us. Therefore, we use this rate to depreciate this asset for four years, applying the reducing balancing method. In the first year, the asset was purchased by 1st January 2018. And from 1st January 2018 to 31st of December, the asset has been put to use for 12 months, which is one year. From 1st January 2018 to 31st December 2018 is one year, that is 12 months. Therefore, depreciation is usually computed per annum, that is every one year. Although in some cases, we can also compute depreciation for half year or quarter year, as the case may be, or as the examiner demands. Now, 25% of 10,000 is the depreciation for the first year after 12 months of use. That is one year. Therefore, 25% is the same thing as 25 over 100, then times the cost, which is 10,000. Then we are going to obtain the depreciation for the first year. So 25% of 10,000 gives us 2,005. That is the depreciation for the first year. Then 10,000 minus 2,005 gives us $7,500. This is what is known as the carrying amount. The carrying amount represents the final or net value of an asset when depreciation has been what? Deducted. So for the first year, the carrying amount of this asset, the motor vehicle, is 7,500. It should be noted that the old name for carrying amount is net book value. 
But now, under the IFRS, that is International Financial Reporting Standard, the new name is carrying amount. So the current amount for the motor vehicle at the end of the first year, 2018, is 7,500. Now the next year, 2019, by the end of the year, 31st December, depreciation will be 25% of $7,500. That is the current amount. Now, depreciation is no longer based on the cost like in the straight line method. And this is why it is called reducing balancing method. Because depreciation is based on the reduced balance of the asset at the end of the year. Now you can observe the date here, it's 31st December 2019, which means that the asset has stayed in the business from 1st January 2019 to 31st December 2019. Depreciation is usually accounted for at the end of the accounting period. So 25% of 7,500 will now give us 1,875. And that becomes the depreciation for 2019. So we have $7,500 minus the depreciation for 2019, which is 1875 Now gives us the current amount of 5625 Of course, the current amount in the first year, 2018, becomes the closing balance of the asset at the end, which also becomes the opening balance at the beginning. So as at the beginning of 2019, $7,500 was the opening balance, or what we call the current amount of the asset for the new period. Now, after a period of 12 months, 31st December 2019, 25% depreciation was carried out on the reduced balance, and 25% of 7,500 gave us 1,875. Now, we now reduce this amount from this, we have 7,500 minus 1,875, which now gives us 5,625, which now becomes the current amount at the end of the period, which now becomes the current amount at the beginning of the period for 2020. The next depreciation we are going to carry out will be based on this current amount of the ending period 2019, which is also the opening balance 2020, and that will be 25% of 5,625 for 31st December 2020. So depreciation for 2021, December 31st, is 25 over 100 times 5,625. That is the current amount for 2019 end of year. This gives us 1,406.25. We are going to approximate our figures to the nearest whole number. So we have 1,406. That becomes the depreciation for 31st December 2021. Now, if we deduct the depreciation of $1,406 from $5,625, we are going to get $4,219. This becomes the current amount for the end of the period 2021, which also becomes the current amount for the beginning of the period 2021. Two. Now, we have already computed depreciation for one year, two years, and three years. Remember that the equation states that the asset will last for four years. So the depreciation for December 31st, 2022 is 25% of 4,219. That is 25 over 100 times 4,219. Of course, the 4,219 is the current amount for 2021. As you can see, we are computing depreciation at the end of the year. So it shows that from December 31st, 2021 to another December 31st, 2022, the asset has stayed for use for one year, which is 12 months. So we now have 25% of 100 times 4,219, which now gives us a total depreciation for one year of 1,054.75. Now, we are approximating to the nearest whole number, so it will be 1,055. We carry one from this seven and add here 
it becomes 5. If you don't have basic knowledge in mathematics, visit our site on foundation in mathematics or basis in mathematics or simplify lectures in mathematics. We have 1055 as a depreciation for December 31st, 2022. So the depreciation for 31st December 2022 now becomes 25% of 4,219. That is 25 over 100 times 4,219. That gives us $1,055. If we deduct this from the previous carrying amount of 4,219, we now have $3,164. This now becomes the final carrying amount of the asset. And this was exactly the amount that they realized from the scrap value. After using the assets for four years, the organization has been able to save in the first year 2005, in the second year 1875, in the third year 1406, and in the fourth year 1055. And now remaining for them, to recover 3,164. Finally, they sold the asset for 3,164. If you add the realizable value of the scrap value, we now have 3,164 plus 1,055 plus 1,406 plus 1,875 plus 2,500. It will give you back 10,000. That means in the first year from the profit and loss account, $2,500 will be deducted as expenses from the profit made. And in the second year, 2019, they will deduct from the profit $1,875. In the third year, 2021, they will deduct from the profit made $1,406. And finally, in 2022, they will deduct $1,055 from the profit. Since these profits are saved and not expense, they do not constitute outflow of funds from the organization but saved for the repurchase of the motor vehicle when it can no longer be used. This explains the reason why organization makes provision for depreciation. As this money has been saved, the value of the asset continues to reduce until it can no longer function. Then this amount that has been saved we now be collected and added to the amount realized from the scrap value, if any, to repurchase the asset of $10,000. You can see that in the reducing balancing method, that as we progress, the amount of depreciation reduces. And that is why it is called the reducing balancing method, because the depreciation, which is a fixed rate, is based on the reduced balance or the carrying amount of the asset every what, year. Recall that under the straight line method, we had the annual depreciation as cost minus scrap value all over useful life. It was the same amount that was charged as depreciation for the first year, that was also charged for the second year, that was also charged for the third year, and for the fourth year. That is under straight line method. And that is why it's either called the fixed installment method, the straight line method, or the uniform rate method. So, we are able to understand the difference between the straight line method and the reducing balancing method. The third part of the equation requires us to use the sum of the year digits method in calculating the depreciation for the four years. That is year one, two, year three, and four. However, the equation still requires us to use the same figures that we used under the straight line method and the reducing balancing method. What is the sum of the year digits method? In this method, all the years for which the asset is useful are noted and written down. The number of years involved are then arranged in descending order and termed digits. The digits are then added together. And the total gotten is then used as sum ratio for calculating depreciation. And the total gotten is then used as sum ratio for calculating depreciation. 
Let us look at the illustration and this will give us a more explanation of this definition of sum of the year digit method. So for victory enterprises, from question 3, the suggested solution goes this way. We have cost of the motor vehicle given as $10,000. Then we have the square value given as $3,164. Then the next thing you get in order to enable you carry out your calculation is what you call cost of depreciation. And cost of depreciation is gotten by cost of the asset minus square value. Since the organization is very sure of recovering $3,164 as square value, it means that from the asset of $10,000, we minus $3,164. And what we have is 6,836. This is the cost of depreciation. This is the amount that the organization will strive to recover. That is the cost of depreciation. And it's gotten by cost of the motor vehicle minus the recoverable scrap value. Note that in this question, we are not giving cost of depreciation, but it can simply be worked out by deducting the scrap value from the cost of the motor vehicle to know the actual amount that the organization will pursue to recover. So in carrying out our calculations, we have the years involved, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. That gives us the number of years as year 1, 2, 3, and 4. Recall that the definition states that, recall the definition it states that in this method, all the years for which the asset is useful are noted and written down. So we have noted all the years for which the asset is useful. That is first year, year one, year two, year three, and year four. And they are written down. Then it states further that the number of years involved are then arranged in descending order and termed digits. You can see the number are now arranged in descending order. That is starting from 4, 3, 2, and 1. In descending order, we now have 4, 3, 2, and 1. That means the 4 comes first, followed by 3, followed by 2, and followed by 1. That is now in descending order not in ascending order. So when they reverse it in this way, it is called or termed digits. That is 4, 3, 2, and 1. The definition further states, the digits are then added together and the total gotten is then used as the sum ratio for calculating depreciation. Now you can see, these digits are now added together. We have 4 plus 3, which is 7, plus 2, 9, plus 1, 10, and we have 10 as a total. This 10 is now used as the sum ratio. Just like in mathematics, if you have 4 is to 3, is to 2, is to 1, we have the sum ratio or the total as what? 10. It is now this 10 that will be used in form of a base to make apportionment and find out the depreciation for the various years. So, simply put, note the years that are involved. Since they gave us a 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021, you now convert it to number of years involved, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. First year, year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4. Then, reverse it in ascending order, bringing the 4 pairs. You now have 4, 3, 2, 1. That is 4, 3, 2, 1. This is now what we term digits. Then add everything together, you have 10. This 10 will now be used, and everything here will now be calculated as if it is a ratio. That is 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1, which the sum is what? 10. So this is what we are going to use to calculate depreciation for 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Let's start from calculating 2018. Calculation of depreciation using the sum of the year digits method. 
We are going to take the digits into consideration in this calculation. For 2018, we have 4 over 10 times $6,836. That gives us $2,734 as depreciation for year 1, 2018. How did we get this figure? It is 4 over 10 times $6,836. That is depreciation cost. We believe that in the first year, that we should allocate four digits out of ten, since in year one, the machine or the motor vehicle has greater power than in year two. Therefore, four over ten times depreciation cost gives us 2,734, which is depreciation for 2018. In year two, 2019, it should be three over ten times depreciation cost. So in 2019, the depreciation should be 3 over 10 times 6,836. And that gives us 2,051 as a depreciation for year 2. Then in year 3, 2020, the depreciation should be 2 over 10 times cost of depreciation. And you can see it here in 2020, we have 2 over 10 times 6,836, which gives us 1,367. Finally, in year 4, only one digit was allocated to year 4. So we have 1 over 10 times cost of depreciation. Therefore, in 2021, we have 1 over 10 times 6,836, which gives us 684. The belief is that year 1 should bear greater strength or greater depreciation than year 2. Year 2 should bear greater depreciation than year 3. And year three should be a greater depreciation than year four. And that is why if you watch the depreciation, it declines as the year progresses and looks like the diminishing balancing method. If you add 2,734 plus 2,051, 1,367 plus 684, it will give you 6,836, which is equivalent to the cost of depreciation. This means that $6,836, which is the cost of depreciation, has been distributed to the various year using the sum of the year digit method. You should note that the figures we are looking for are 2,734 depreciation for 2018, 2,051 depreciation for 2019, 1,367 depreciation for 2020 and 684 that is depreciation for 2021. If you add the whole figures, it gives you back the cost of depreciation. Having known how to obtain the depreciation for the various year, you should know that this, is, that this amount will be charged to the profit and loss in the first year. Second year, this will be charged to profit and loss. Third year, this will be charged to profit and loss. And fourth year, this will be charged to the profit and loss. By charging these figures to profit and loss, it means that every profit made in the fourth year, they will deduct 2,734. And also for year two, the profit made, they will deduct 2,051. Year three, from the profit made, they will deduct 1,367. And in year four, from the profit made, they will deduct 684. This means that after four years, they will be able to save $6,836. And when this amount is added to the scrap value of $3,164, it will give us back $10,000, which will be equivalent to the cost of repurchasing a new motor vehicle. So the purpose of depreciation is to make provision so that at the end of the useful life of the asset, the organization can acquire another non-current asset, as the case may be. Now we have looked at the various methods of calculating depreciation, the straight line method, the diminishing balancing method, and the sum of the year digits method. We are also going to look at the production unit method, because the IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard, recognizes more the straight line method 
the reducing balancing method and the production unit method. Thereafter, we are going to transfer this depreciation gotten to their various ledgers in compliance with the principles of accounting. Another method of depreciation that we are going to be looking at is the production unit method of depreciating non-current assets. Under the production unit method, the life of the asset is expressed in terms of the number of units it can produce. Under the production unit method, the cost of the non-current asset, less any scrap value, is divided into the projected number of units to be produced by the non-current assets. Production unit method of depreciating non-current assets. Under the production unit method, the life of the asset is expressed in terms of the number of units it can produce. Under the production unit method, the cost of the non-current assets, less any scrap value, is divided into the projected number of units to be produced by the non-current uh, assets. Example, Victory Enterprises acquired for cash a production machine costing $105,000. The projected number of units to be produced by the machine during its useful life of 10 years is 50,000 units. After which, the machine will have a residual value of $5,000 required. Use the production unit method to account for the depreciation per unit produced. To offer solution to this question, we need to extract the cost of the machine, which is $105,000. The number of units to be produced during the useful life of the asset, which is 50,000 units. Then the residual value of the asset, which is 5,000 units. And the 10 years, which represents the useful life, even if we may not use it in this computation. Now, extracting it for Victory Enterprises, we begin our calculation. We begin our calculation. We have the cost of, we have the cost of machine, which is $105,000. The scrap value, which is $5,000. Estimated unit to be produced, which is 50,000 units. And the useful life of the assets, which is 10 years. Recall that from the definition, we said that the life of the asset is expressed in terms of the number of units it can produce. This means that it is the unit produced that will be used to determine the depreciation. We also went further to say that under this production unit method, the cost of the non-current assets, less any scrap value, is divided into the projected number of units to be produced by the non-current assets. So what do we do? We find out the cost of the non-current assets, which is $105,000, and deduct the scrap value from it to have the cost of depreciation. And then, this cost of depreciation or depreciation cost will now be divided by the number of units to be produced by the non-current asset. That will give us the amount to be charged as depreciation per unit produced. Now, to offer the solution for victory enterprises, we extract the following. Cost of the machine, $105,000. Scrap value, $5,000. Estimated unit to be produced, 50,000 units. Their useful life, 10 years. So to get depreciation per unit produced, we have cost of machine minus scrap value divided by estimated unit to be produced. So we have the cost of machine, which is $105,000. We place it here. Then minus scrap value, which is $5,000. You can see it's $5,000.
then divided by estimated unit to be produced, which is 50,000 units. Estimated unit to be produced is 50,000 units. So cost of machine minus scrap value divided by estimated unit to be produced now gives us $105,000 minus $5,000 divided by 50,000 units. Now, if you have $105,000 minus $5,000, it gives us $100,000. This $100,000 is the cost of depreciation or depreciation cost. Then, divide it by 50,000 units. You now have $0.20, which is about 20 cents. Now, this is the depreciation per unit produced. So if they produce 5,000 units in a year, it is 0 0.20 times 5,000 units. That gives them the depreciation for the year. This is what the production unit method or depreciation of, of non-current assets is all about. It looks at the cost of depreciation and divides it by the total unit to be produced during the useful life of the asset to determine depreciation per unit produced. So in every unit produced, we remove $0.20 as depreciation. So the depreciation for a period depends on the unit produced. The next stage of our learning will be how to post these transactions to the ledgers. We have already treated the straight line method, the reducing balancing method, the sum of the year digit method, and the production unit method of accounting for depreciation of non-current assets. But for the purpose of our foundation knowledge, we are going to demonstrate how these transactions can be posted to ledgers with the use of a reducing balancing method, which can also be called the declining or diminishing balancing method. Now, if you recall, using the reducing balancing method, we were able to get the following depreciations for the following years. In years 2018, the depreciation was 2,500. 2019, the depreciation was 1,875. In 2020, depreciation was $1,406. And in 2021, Depreciation was $1,055, $1,055. And we know that the cost of the motor vehicle was $10,000. This was our workings when we were trying to obtain the depreciation for the four years using the reducing balancing method. To post these transactions to the various ledgers, we need the following accounts or ledgers. The motor vehicle account, which can also be called the asset account, the provision for depreciation account, which can also be called the accumulated depreciation account, the statement of profit and loss account extract, and the statement of financial position extract. The first ledger that we're going to make postings to will be the motor vehicle account, that is the asset account. From our knowledge of cash book, when we purchase motor vehicle for cash, the cash book will be credited with motor vehicle account, while the motor vehicle account will be debited with cash used to purchase the asset. So the first thing we do now is to debit the motor vehicle account with the cash spent for the purchase of the motor vehicle. We don't need to show the cash account here or the cash book because the motor vehicle account, the provision for depreciation account, the profit and loss account extract, and the balance sheet extract. These are the major accounts that we are going to make postings to. So we begin by debiting the motor vehicle account, representing the asset account, with the cash used in purchasing the motor vehicle, that is the original cost of the motor vehicle, at the which is January 1st, 2018. Debit the motor vehicle account with $10,000 cash on January 1st, 2018, used in purchasing the motor vehicle, as the motor vehicle account is the receiver. Now, what we do here is this. Since this transaction will last for four years, that is from 2018 to 2021, we are going to adopt a single entry here. What do I mean? 
We are going to conclude everything about this account as an individual account or as a single account. Then we'll go back to provision for depreciation account and do the same. We also go back to statement of profit or loss account and do the same. Then finally, we we'll go back to statement of financial position extract and also do the same. So for our foundation stage, we are going to treat this separately, separately, this separately, and this separately. Then at the end of the day, we shall link them using the double entry principle. For a better understanding, we are going to treat each of these accounts separately. So we start with the motor vehicle account. So what we are going to do here is this. For this 2018 January 1st, that was when the motor vehicle was purchased. Since throughout the four years, no additional motor vehicle was purchased, we are going to continuously be carrying this balance forward or bringing them down for the four years as follows. So we are going to treat the motor vehicle account as a separate account by balancing this account for four years as follows. So the motor vehicle was purchased on January 1st, 2018 for cash of $10,000. Now, since they did not purchase any other motor vehicle in 2018, we closed the account for the year by bringing this 10,000 down, the normal way we balance. Then still in that 2008, by December 31st, we have the closing balance of motor vehicle account as 10,000. That is balancing the two sides to make the two sides equal. Then we still bring it down and have it closed in the same line with this. That ends the transaction for 2000. And 18. Since in 2019, the question did not tell us that they bought additional motor vehicle, the same cost of motor vehicle will be brought under this 10,000 for the fresh year 2019, January 1st, and becomes balance brought down 10,000. We are carrying forward or bringing down the same asset at $10,000. Remember that in the Asset account, we are showing the motor vehicle at cost, at its original cost, and we are carrying it along with that same cost. So we are carrying these assets at cost in this motor vehicle account, that is asset account. And if additional assets is bought or additional motor vehicle, they will have to add it. But since none was bought, it shows that in 2019, January 1st, that the opening balance of the asset still remains. 10,000. Of course, we are going to still close the 2019 transaction the same way we closed this and close 2020 transaction the same way and 2021 transaction. So let's do that now. So the balance brought down of 2019, January 1st, means that the business is still maintaining the same asset. So for 2019, since there was no new purchase, we closed the account by bringing this down. And we have 2019, December 31st, balance carry down. The normal way we close account, 10,000, so that these two sides becomes equal. So we still bring down this one and close, bringing the same balance to the same line. Thereafter, we still proceed to 2020. The balance carry down of 10,000 still comes to 2020 and becomes balance brought down for January 1st, that is opening balance, 2020. To close for 2020, we have December 31st, balance carry down 10,000, that is the same balance, to make the two sides equal. Then we still bring it down and close it in the same line with this. Then finally, we still bring down this balance to 2021, January 1st, and it becomes balance brought down, 10,000. We close it. And then close the balance for 2021. Then we we'll have 2021, December 31st, balance carried down 10,000. We now bring down this balance and close in the same line with this. Then we we'll still bring this 10,000 down as balance brought down for 2022, January 1st. There was nothing given to us about 2022. But in accounting, once a balance carried down exists, a balance brought down must exist. And that should be reflecting the following year as the opening balance. Now, this account did not take depreciation into consideration. What we usually do in this account is to continue to take into consideration 
the cost of the assets that the business is maintaining without taking into consideration any depreciation. Assuming in 2019, they purchased additional assets of 10,000. It means that the balance here will become 20,000 because we are going to add cash purchase of 10,000. And 10,000 plus 10,000 now gives us 20,000. Therefore, our balance carried down will now become 20,000 since the asset has increased. But since the organization, within the four years, did not purchase any additional asset, we continue to carry down the value of the assets at cost price for the four years in question. Remember I said we are treating each of these accounts as a separate account. Now, let's look at the provision for depreciation accounts.